Hey guys, Jared Wesley here of Live Traders and it is that time of the week. It is lecture time and this week's topic guys is a big one. I've been getting a lot of emails about this particular topic. It's a topic that could potentially change your trading career if you, if you use it properly. It's trade management, okay? The ultimate trade management guide, the ultimate trade management course, so to speak. Um, what we're gonna do today, guys, is something a little different though. We're gonna take one chart and we're gonna apply four different trade managements to that chart so you guys can see how impactful trade management can be and can't be. A lot of you guys are just kind of slinging mud at the wall and you're thinking, all right, I'm just gonna use this management come hell or high water. Well, there's a lot of different ways that you can manage a trade and a lot of that depends on your personality style, a lot of it depends on your time constraints, not everybody has all day to trade, and a lot of that also depends on kind of your your emotions, so to speak, as well, as well as your expectation. So some of you out there, for example, are trying to get these huge targets, but you're managing really tight, maybe on a two minute bar by bar or something like that. Okay, you're not, that's not gonna happen. So you're gonna see a chart in, in the, um, the lecture here where we talk about goal attaining and profit protecting, and it's a sliding scale, and it's very important to understand what your expectation is, what stage the stock is in, what stage the market is in, as well as, like I said a minute ago, what your personality style is, what your time constraints are, all of those things factor into the type of management approach that you should be using. Most of you, like I said, are just using some boilerplate management approach and going, that's the one. And don't get me wrong, that could work for you, but maybe this way you can fine tune, maximize your strengths, minimize your weaknesses, fine tune your management approach and just make a lot more money. And here's the best part, by taking the same types of trades. So you're just gonna apply a slightly different management strategy to it, but possibly make more money because of it, all right? So it's a very, very important lecture because trade management, money management are two of the single most important things that you guys do as traders, all right? If you like this video, please click the like button. As always, smash, hammer, crush that subscribe button. I'm Jared Wesley of Live Traders. Let's get to it. This week's topic is one chart, four different management styles. Um, we're gonna dig a little bit deeper than we have in a very long time into trade management. Uh, a little bit about the emotions that go into trade management uh, and why uh, understanding yourself as a trader is a very important part of trade management. And the other thing that we don't talk about enough and we haven't really brought it up in a while is expectation. How expectation um, affects management. And I think it's something that uh, too many traders just overlook. Uh, we're not robots. You're not um, putting your you know USB stick in your head. Okay, uh, you have to appreciate and respect who you are as a person and a trader because it's going to have an impact on how comfortably you can manage a position. And I'll say it again towards the end, but it's not all about what is most profitable. I know you think that's that's completely erroneous. It's not. It doesn't matter how profitable a management strategy is if you don't have any intent on following it or simply can't follow it. So it's very, very important. But before we do any of that, we have to do our weekly installment. We got to get our fix, right? When will the insanity stop? Um, this week's is a little bit egregious, not because the financial terms are egregious, but because of it just goes to show people's thought process. Um, and this one is probably something that's incredibly common amongst a lot of people. Okay, um, so let's take a look, all right? This particular person said, when will my insanity stop? Okay, you can see they sent this like, I don't know, a week ago, give or take. I shorted SLV this week three times because of an author I've been following. He swears by a price percent oscillator. 14 of the 15 times the 10 day crosses the 21 day, the next following weeks are down and he shorts ETFs. I guess I picked the wrong week. Huh, that's odd because 14 to 15 times is a pretty high, pretty high percentage in the 90s, right? Well, last Friday, he signaled gold and silver are headed down. I got in Friday, lost 200 on Monday, made back my 200 on Wednesday and lost it again today. I used his, quote, patterns and they let me down every time. He's still shorting gold. I guess he doesn't want to let his viewers down. Um, you see anything wrong with that at all? Just, just anything? There's not... 
I mean, maybe I'm wrong and maybe there's more to this and maybe this person understands the other person's methodology or strategy deeper than he's letting on to be. But this really comes across as I'm just blindly following somebody and hoping to make money by it. Again, I don't know if that's exactly what's happening here. I'm just making the point that it comes across that way that I really don't know a whole lot about what this person is doing, but they seem to be making money 90% of the time and I'm just going to follow that person. Not very, not the brightest thing you could do. Let's just put it that way, okay? So I kept lowering my stop loss because, quote, I knew the market had to go lower. The YouTube guy said so, okay? And it's probably even better. It's probably even free on YouTube. Um, point is, is this person learned their lesson without getting absolutely, utterly, completely hammered, which is good. Um, but the idea of it is something we can all learn from. There's a lot of people that come into chat rooms, they watch YouTube, and they're really just hoping to get rich quick, right? And that's what they're hoping for. Uh, you can hear it in the types of questions people ask, in the comments they make, in the emails that I get. Stay away from that, guys. This trading business is going to be one of, if not the most difficult, challenging thing you have ever tried in your entire life, bar none. You don't believe me? I know, I know, and I know. I know you ran a Fortune 500 company, you ran you ran a marathon in in two minutes and 10 seconds. And, and you know, you know better than the people that have been doing it for 15 or 20 years telling you how hard it is. You'll see it's that hard. It really is that hard. So as a lesson here, use always use proper money management. Why? Because you can follow an idiot. But if you use proper money management, you'll never get hurt that badly. I'll repeat that one because it's key. I don't you you could follow a monkey, you could follow an ant. It wouldn't matter if you use proper money management, $5 risk, $10 risk. It wouldn't matter because you're always going to be protected with that. But you still shouldn't follow somebody blindly because it's foolish. All right. So use a trading plan. Use proper money management. Okay. Point. A lot of people are doing this. A whole lot of people are doing this. And it just doesn't make any logical sense. But we've all found out that common sense is very uncommon. Okay. So let's dig in, guys. Um, this one is not chalked up with tons of slides, okay? There's only really four main slides here, uh, but we're gonna dig deep into these, and I want you guys to see the variations, the differences um, between the exact same chart, hence one chart, four management, and how the outcome can be vastly different just because of the management approach on the exact same chart, okay? And it's important to understand that because it's gonna give you a better idea of maybe the approach that suits you best, okay? And granted, it's one chart, it'll vary, but we'll talk about the different variances in managements, okay? So, we're gonna talk a little bit about a bar by bar trail stop, a five minute pivot trail stop, an all or nothing management, and a combination management, okay? These are the four charts, okay? So, in good markets with good, sorry, good in markets with less follow through stages, one and three, a little bit choppy. Like today's a little bit of a narrow range inside day, the five minute bar by bar could be a little bit better only because you're not gonna get as hurt doing this, okay? It's not going to maximize profits, but it will help you minimize losses, which is what you're trying to do in choppy stages one and stage three markets, right? You're not trying to shoot for the moon because stage one and stage three are not moon type stages, right? They're choppy, overlappy, tug of war type stages. Okay, stage one's quiet, stage three is, is overlappy. Okay, this is also a good management for traders that are a little bit jittery who might have a slightly higher batting average, maybe in the 60%, 65% range. Okay, um, so you'll see here in a couple minutes, we'll go through each one of them and what they produce in terms of the results they produce. Okay, um, second, we're going to go over a five minute pivot trail stop. This is very good in trending markets where there's more follow through, right? Stages two and stages four, where we expect the markets to keep continuing in that stage. All right. It's good for maximizing profits, but does not protect against losses nearly as well because you have to wait for a pivot to form and waiting for a pivot to form could take a long time. And in doing so, you're not really, you don't have much protected. Okay. So you're leaving yourself more exposed but in doing so, you're also allowing for larger targets, all right? So it's good for patient traders who don't mind sitting through pullbacks. Slightly lower batting average is likely, but completely acceptable. Example, we talked about Unmalt doing all or nothing, which is next. You can have a low batting average and still do very, very well, okay? I mean, Unmalt this week's got a 33% batting average. He's up 3R. That's good, 1R a day, right? Nothing wrong with that. So anyway, 
All or nothing, on the other hand, is a far less active approach, okay? It's good for people with limited time to trade. Now, why? Because you can literally set a bracket order. You can trade for 30 minutes or an hour, get into a couple trades, set your brackets, your high, you know, your target area, your stop loss, and, and you're done. You just literally have to check your phone or, or come back to your desk at 3.30, 3.45 and make an adjustment, and that's it. You're done. So it's good for people that are, again, um, they don't have time to sit in front of their desk. Maybe they only have an hour a day or 30 minutes a day. Okay, um, so it's a more of a set it and forget it attitude. And um, I think it helps traders from over managing positions or selling too soon, which is an affliction that a lot of traders have, including myself. Okay, and the last is a combination, right? We'll take a combination of these managements, which is kind of the best of both worlds, protects profits and allows for larger targets. It kind of, again, it's that in between ground here, works well in most market conditions. So let's dig in. First chart. Okay. And before you ask me the question, this is a 20 period moving average. That's like gold, greenish gold, whatever that color is. And then the turquoise one, aquamarine one uh, is a 40 period. All right. I don't use moving averages, uh, but this is a little bit of an older chart, but this is a 20 period. This is a, uh, what should we call it? 40 period. Okay. So on the first here to the left, now, again, we're not here to debate patterns today. We're not talking about patterns. We're just talking about management. Okay. So Oh, well, this first one, lower highs, lower highs, lower highs, lower lows. We got a green bar at some support, rising moving average. So your entry is going to be right around 49.82. Your stop loss is going to be around 49.67. So you're looking at about a 15 cent stop loss. So in an uptrending market on a relative strength stock, even bar by bar management can be profitable. So there's two things here. All right. This is a little bit combination-esque, a little bit. Okay, because yes, this is bar by bar, but this person or in this example, we're taking half off at the prior pivot high. Okay, so it's not a full bar by bar. All right, this is somebody who's saying, all right, I took a buy set at the first target is always the prior pivot high on a buy set of this right out of PTS. First target's always the prior pivot. So they bar by barred it up to that first target, but then they took half at the target and then they bar by barred the rest throughout the rest of the day. So what happens here? So you get in at 49.82, you bar by bar it up to this pivot, and then you take some off right near the high of the pivot, which is 50.25, okay? So when you sell half at that area, you're selling 500 shares. Again, if you had 15 cent stop loss, uh, in this case, we're risking $150. I apologize, I didn't say that earlier, but the risk level is $150. You can see it right there. Um, so you have a thousand shares of the stock. So you sell half at your first target. Okay. That's 50, 25, roughly. You're going to lock in about 210 bucks. Okay. So do the math on that 18 cents plus 25 cents is 43 cents times 500 shares. And you're going to lock in about 210, 215 bucks, whatever it comes out to. Okay. Um, 242 yeah, cents, whatever it is. Okay. Then you're going to bar by bar, but here's the key guys. And this is important. You'll note this consolidation. When you bar by bar, you should give a stock some room and have a little bit, not a lot, because I don't want to give you too much artistic freedom, have a little bit of flexibility. Let me explain. So if you'll notice, you see one, two, three, four bar consolidation right here. And you'll see this bottoming tail where my cursor is. It dips ever so slightly below the prior bar, just ever so slightly. When you're bar by barring, depending on the stock, because obviously Bank of America is different than Amazon, give it some room. Don't bar by bar at one penny back. So, you know, if you have a, a stock that moves maybe three or four dollars a day, that's the average trading range, and you're going to five minute bar by bar, maybe give it 10, 15 cents under the bar. Okay. You want to give it a little bit of wiggle room. You don't want to bar by bar to the penny. So, in that case, you wouldn't get stopped out on that little bottoming tail, but then it moves up. And then over here, some people are saying, but geez, Jared, if you were a strict bar by bar person, you would be out over here, right? You would, because you'd move your stop up a little below. And then by this bar over here, you'd be done. But this is where I mean slight flexibility. What's forming here? Consolidation. So what I'm getting at is because a consolidation is forming, right? And you're four, five, six bars into it. Don't trail stop. It's super tight. Keep your stop loss under the base, which is under this bottoming tail. Under that bottoming tail plus five or 10 cents. Now again, that depends. Amazon, I might 
five cents is nothing. I might give it 50 cents under the bar, a dollar under the bar. Who knows, right? So because this is consolidating, which means the stock is resting to likely move higher, be a little more flexible on your bar by bar. Now, if this stock was just moving straight up, then I'd tell you bar by bar at five or 10 cents back, no ifs, ands, or buts about it, okay? So in this case, you put your stop under the base, it breaks out again, and now you're going to restart your, your strict bar by bar, right? You let it consolidate and it moves higher, raise the stop, moves higher, raise the stop, move it one bar back. So when this bar, for example, right here, when this bar begins, put your stop loss under the previous bar. When the next bar right here begins, put your stop loss under the previous bar. Now, one of the things you're going to notice, when you have wide range bars, particularly on volume, because we have a couple wide range bars on massive volume, what are you thinking? It's probably an ending bar, but you don't really have anything you can do here on a bar by bar. You're gonna have to just sit there and take it. So. That can also be one of the issues with bar by bar sometimes because, again, you might get a wide range ending bar on big volume and you don't have much protected. So you can't protect on this bar until the next bar forms, which is a red bar. Then you can place your stop under here. So anyway, you continue your bar by bar. Go up, up, up. And finally, even with your five or 10 cents, you get tagged. And the back half stops at 50, 90, okay? The back half stops at 50.90. So your front half, you sold some at 50.25 because that's the prior pivot. You bar by bar it all the way up to here. The average cost here um, is, well, I don't know what the average price is, but you're getting 540 off the back half, 210 off the front half, you made 750 bucks, which ends up being 5R. Now I'm gonna be honest with you. This is a really good example of bar by bar. Most, most five minute bar by bars are not, let me repeat, not going to get you 5R. But it shows what's possible once in a while. Hey, what's a good example of that today? FSLY. If you one minute it, two minute it, five minute of bar by bar FSLY today, you'd be up like 10, 12 bucks on that thing. So what I'm saying is it's not normal, it's not common to get 5R, 6R, 7R out of a five minute bar by bar, but once a week, if, you know, three or four times a month, you're gonna get a runner, and that runner is gonna give you 5R, 8R, but what you're gonna average is between one and two R if you do a five minute bar by bar, because sometimes you'll see a stock shake and then rip, and you're, you're tagged out after that, okay? So strict bar by bar is just Bar by bar it up until you stop out. Could you add some flexibility to this? Yes, for example, I'm not gonna start my five minute bar by bar until at least three bars form or at least two bars form, et cetera. You could do that, right? Um, so it's up to you, but strict bar by bar in this case is a very advantageous example. They're not normally gonna be this. Next chart, pivot trail stopping, okay? And as it said earlier, in a trending market, this is likely your best approach for profit making. Not protecting, but profit making. So same entry, same stop loss, same share size, but notice you're not taking any off. Stock moves up, it consolidates. As soon as it breaks out of the range, now you have an ability or an opportunity to raise your stop loss. So just think about this for a second, okay? Give it some thought. You got in at 49.82. You weren't able to raise your stop loss and that happened right around 10.05, right? So you got in, you got in at 49.82 at 10.05-ish, ish. You weren't able to raise your stop to 11.30, yet the stock was moving in your direction. So ask yourself, be honest, do you have the patience to watch a stock go up from 49.82 up to 50.25 or 50.30, whatever it is, 50 cents, something like that, you're up 3R, give or take, and you have nothing protected, zero, not even break even, nothing is protected. Can you do that? Are you able to do that? I can't answer that question for you, you have to ask yourself. So stock moves up, consolidates, and once it breaks out, then you can raise your stop. It moves higher again, puts in a very minor pivot, it is a minor pivot, and then once it breaks the high right here, right on this bar, 
right around 1205, then you can raise your stop again. In this case, you raise it to 5075, okay? Stock moves up, pulls back, moves up. Now, you could also raise your stop here. You could consider this a very sloppy minor pivot. It is very sloppy, but if you really wanted to, and the stock put in a new high right here, you could raise your stop loss to there if you wanted to, okay? Stock moves up, pulls back, moves up. This is where you're gonna raise your stop, okay? Now, one of the issues that I see with traders with pivots is when to raise the stop loss. You have to raise the stop loss after it puts in a new high, right? So this consolidation, you can't raise your stop loss under the consolidation until it breaks out, until it actually breaks out. Once it finally breaks out and gets over 50-40, then you can raise your stop loss. So up here, you have a huge move up here. It pulls back. You can't raise your stop loss over here. You raise it on the wide range green bar here because that's when it breaks the prior high. So when it breaks the prior high, then you can raise your stop. What I'm seeing is people are raising their stop losses too soon. So what they'll do, for example, is they'll raise their stop loss on a buy setup as soon as the buy setup triggers. Wait, okay, wait till the buy setup is reaching almost the prior pivot high or at least more than 50% of the way up, then raise your stop loss. The goal in pivot trail stopping is to give it the room so that it will go higher, right? So in doing so, this is what I asked before is, are you capable of allowing it to wiggle? And wiggle could be three or four hour worth of wiggles. Are you okay with that? If you are, this is probably a great management. Why? Because in this case, this thing made 8.6R, all right? That is more common for five and 15 minute pivot trail stopping. See, the last chart we looked at was a five minute bar by bar that made 5R. 5R is not common, not common for a five minute bar by bar, okay? It's just not. This is more common, 5R, 4R, 6R, on a pivot trail stop, especially on a trending stock, okay? So you can see they're worlds apart. One is a very tight management that generally is in protection mode most of the time. That is bar by bar. And it doesn't have to be five minutes. It could be 15 minutes, it could be one minute, it could be two minutes. We're gonna talk about that a little bit later. The pivot trail stopping is the exact opposite. This is saying, hey, I want this stock to go much higher and I know that I need to give it a lot of room so it can go higher, but I'm not going to protect as much. The next one is very simple. Folks in the chat room are very familiar with this, right? All or nothing. In this case, a three R all or nothing. This is just set it and forget it. You get in 49.82, put your stop loss at 49.67, whatever your target is, in this case, 50, 20, so you walk away, right? You walk away. You need 45 cents here and there's your target right there. All right, it's actually a little above that, but you get the point, it's right in that range. Now, what's the rub here? Well, it's very simple, it's easy, set it, forget it, but you give up a lot sometimes. Now, sometimes it'll go exactly 3R and turn around, and you're like, whoo, I pulled the cheese from the trap and that was an awesome trade. But there are other times where, in this case, the stock goes all the way up to 51.60 and you're out at 50.27. You gave up $1.30, $1.40 on this. You gave up 8R? Now, I'm not saying you would have gotten 11R out of it. I'm just saying you gave up a ton. But it's easier. It generally keeps people from selling too soon because you just set your bracket and walk away, delete it from your screen. But there are times you're going to give up a lot. For example, there was not a great pattern on FSLY today, but if you took FSLY, it went $10, you would have been out at 3R, probably a $2 move. You would have been gone. So again, go back to the emotions. Can you handle it? What suits your personality? What suits your time constraints? All of these things are factors and they're very important factors in which one of these managements you choose. So this one's simple. You, you get in right here, your stop loss is right here. You do nothing, absolutely nothing until it gets to 5027. If it never gets to 5027, then you close it out at the end of the day at 345. That's it. Target, stop, or close it out at the end of the day. That's it. Now, the last one is, well, I think what 
a lot of people maybe should be doing, right? I think all or nothing is a great approach for new traders because it allows you to focus on everything except management, meaning it simplifies your life. Management can be a complicated thing. Oh, I gotta do bar by bar, then I gotta do pivots, and I wanna do a combination, right? So it can be complicated. All or nothing eliminates the complication, but the combination method is probably the best balance between profit protecting and target reaching. I mean, that's key. I mean, isn't that what we all want? Don't we all want to hit a huge target but protect on the way up? Wouldn't that be sweet if we could all just hit five, 10 R targets and then protect it like one R back all the way? Sure. But we don't live in an ideal world. We don't live in a bubble. The markets are, are rational. Okay. So same entry, 49.82, same stop loss. Normally, this would be target number one, right? Right at the prior pivot high. But in this case, you had a pullback to support at the rising moving average after an excessive early this. Instead of selling half at the first pivot, we bar by bar trail stopped it up to how far it would go. We don't know how far it would go because you're bar by barring it. We then sold the first half lot, right? Sold a half lot at 50.85. Why? Because that's where the actual bar by bar actually stops, right? So you trail it up bar by bar, bar by bar. And again, this takes a little flexibility in here. It does, but you recognize a consolidation is forming. So you, you put it under the consolidation. Then you go up, 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 and then you get tagged up in this range, perhaps. Okay. And that's a tight one. If, you, if you're bar by barring it further back, you might have gotten all the way up to here, right? You may have gotten uh, actually, yeah. I actually messed up. This arrow is in the wrong spot. Hold on, let's fix that. There it is, my bad. So now the arrow's in the right spot, okay? So you bar by bar it up to this red bar and that's where you get tagged out at 50.85 or 50.90, okay? Give or take. Then, then once you're out half, you're gonna pivot trail stop the back, okay? Now, could you do the opposite? Sure you could. You could start out on pivots and when you're up 3R, 4R, 5R, then bar by bar it, right? So there's a lot of flexibility with combination hybrid management depending on what you're looking to accomplish, depending on that word expectation, okay? If you're expecting a huge move, then I would start the trade on pivots and not start it on bar by bar. And then when the stock starts to get climactic or wide range ending bars on big ending volume, then move to bar by bar. So you can do this either way. But the reason I'm commenting, guys, is some people are like, you know, I'm kind of a jittery trader. So I want to start the trade with bar by bar. That's what I want. I want to start it with bar by bar. Once I get that half lot off, I feel so much more relaxed. And then I can do pivots. Make sense? So there's different ways you can approach this depending on, wait for it, your personality. And I find for a lot of traders, once they take a third off or a half lot off, they're much more comfortable as traders, much calmer as a trader. So starting out with a, a bar by bar is actually not as bad as you guys think it is, right? Because it allows you to make a one R, half of an R, two R, whatever, and dump half your shares. And now the back half doesn't, doesn't feel as bad. All right. So on the back half, you pivot trail, stop it out. And just like earlier, you're going to get out somewhere on that 5120, 5110 area pivots over here. You're probably going to get out somewhere on this pullback right in that area. Okay. And the net gain here is 7.8 R. It's a nice combination. So I just want it to be clear to you though, that there's no rule that says you have to start by bar, bar, bar by bar, and then do pivots. There's no rule that says you have to start with pivots, then do bar by bar. But one of the things that's key though, and it's very important when you choose a management, not only is your personality and time constraints, but also what's the chart capable of, right? What's the chart capable of? Meaning if you're in a sideways stage one or stage three in the markets, pivots are going to be tough. Like today is an inside day in the markets. Pivot trail stopping isn't going to get you very far today because the market's not moving. It's in a narrow range. But if you get one of those breakout days in the market or you have a stock that's just, just itching on the daily chart to break higher, you want to give it more room, have more flexibility 
and let the stock wiggle so that you don't get shaken out so it does move higher, okay? So it's just one of those things that really, again, it just depends on your personality, your expectations, your time constraints, all those things. So this is, this slide right here is directly out of PTS. It's an important slide. I hesitated to put it in because it's an important slide, all right? This is what trading is all about. This chart plus expectation, right? This chart plus expectation. What this chart is showing you is a sliding scale of give and take. Isn't that what trading is? Isn't that what life is? Give and take. Nothing is ever perfect. Usually somewhere in the middle is where we want to typically be. Well, if we use one minute bar by bar, what are we doing? That's extreme profit protecting. You're not going to get very far doing one minute bar by bar as soon as you enter a trade. Now, it, it may work for you. I mean, you might have a 90% batting average and it works. But you're going to get shaken out of a heck of a lot of trades. If we go all the way down to the bottom, and this is for intraday trading, obviously, right? 15-minute pivots are going to be huge goal attaining. You're going to get some big time intraday goals by using 15 minute pivots, but you're going to be giving up a lot. You might be up 6R on a trade with nothing protected, nothing. So you got, you have to find where is the happy medium for you. Now I believe, and I think Jordan was saying the same thing for new traders, all or nothing like 2R all or nothing is something really good to start with. Because if you start with that, you can always adjust it later. Not in the middle of the trade. I mean, later on, try it for a month or two months and see how it goes. But as you gain some experience, you might find, you know what? I really like, for example, as a hypothetical, I like to start my trades on five minute pivots. And then after I get to say three R, I move to a five minute bar by bar. And then when I get to four or five R, I go to a two minute bar by bar. Some hybrid approach. We talk about this in PTS, right? So. A lot of this comes down to expectation. Does the stock actually have that kind of room? Meaning if you're getting into trade that only has two R worth of room, it's probably not all that advantageous to do a 15 minute pivot or a five minute pivot. You only have two, two R of room anyway. And this is why I go back to what I said. I know I'm repeating myself, but you need to hear it. What stage are you in in the market? What stage are you in in the stock? Because it's important to know because it could affect how you manage it or whether or not you even take the trade because you know your management's not advantageous to that type of stage or that particular stage, okay? So there's a lot that goes into trade management and we're not gonna get into all of it today in 30 or 45 minutes. I mean, we could talk for hours about this topic, all right? So this is very important. I wanna, we're not done yet, there's a few more slides, but I wanna leave you with this th thought process. What can you actually do? That's number one. I don't care what you think you can do in theory. I want to know what you actually can do. What type of management can you do? For me, I can't do 15 minute pivots. Ask me how I know. The first year of trading, I struggled to do 15 minute pivots. And I struggled mightily to do 15 minute pivots. Okay? To the point where I didn't make any money at it because I, I wasn't following it. I was getting out of trades way too early. Well, guess what? Trade management's a give and take. What I mean by that simply is if you sell a 15 minute pivot too soon, what are you doing? You're hurting yourself in the future because you're gonna have a lower batting average with 15 minute pivots. But when one goes, when you get quote a runner, you're gonna get 10 R out of that runner. Well, what if you sold that runner at three R for a three R gain? You just gave up seven R. Well, that's a lot of, not missed trades, that's a lot of trades that may have stopped out. So do you understand what I'm saying? Like when you're using a goal attaining management approach, you can't mess with it because it might be the one or two trades out of 30 or 40 that go 10 R that make your entire month. Does this make sense? So you have to know what you're doing. See, for example, if you're shooting for one R targets and you're doing like two minute bar by bar, if you mess up one trade, it's not the end of the world because you were only gonna get one R anyway from it. But if you mess up a 15 minute pivot trade that goes 12 R and you got two, you just gave up a massive amount of money that might entirely affect your, the rest of your month. 
So you have to know what the expectation is. And then you also have to know if you can do it. So my point simply is your first three, six, nine months of trading, 12 months of trading, your first year, give or take, it's going to be figuring out what management approach suits you and your expectation and your personality. And that's going to be a very difficult thing to do because what's going to happen is you're going to see somebody out there that's profitable with one of these approaches. And you're going, you know what? That sounds good. I'm going to try that. And you're going to try it for a couple months and you're going to really struggle with it. And you're going to force it upon yourself when what you should be doing is reevaluating going, you know what? I'm not at Mike Tyson yet. I'm still glass Joe. I'm not at Mike Tyson. I got to work through the crowd. I got to get through Soto Popinski, right? I got to get through those guys. Maybe lower your management expectation. See how that goes. Find a baseline, so to speak, right? And then work from the baseline. Okay? It's very, very important that you understand that. All right? So management pitfalls, selling too soon, not allowing trades to hit target, not taking stop loss, falsely believing the stop's going to rebound, just overall inconsistency. Why am I mentioning this? Because these are all going to have an impact on what type of management you choose. All right? You need to find that baseline that I just talked about. There's tons and tons of types of managements or hybrid or combination approaches. All or nothing, which I call the benchmark, is what you should be trying when you're new. It's what you should be trying when you're new and then make some adjustments. Not everybody can do all or nothing properly. All right? It takes a lot of patience to do all or nothing properly. Okay? And I think I alluded to this, so I'm not going to spend as much time. We always ask that question, what's the ideal management? What's the holy grail? What does perfection look like? Perfection is different for everybody. It's, it, I know that you're going to get a lot of people that say, well, just do it. Use the Nike commercial. Just do it. It doesn't work like that. It just doesn't. You're not a robot. It doesn't work like that. So understand which one you could realistically follow 90 to 99% of the time because there is no 100%. Only you know what that is. Only you can. Somebody can't tell you what that is. You're going to learn that through experience. But the hard part about experience is, are you being truly realistic and objective? Are you lying to yourself? Traders like to lie to themselves. Okay, it's a common thing because, well, there's nobody watching you, right? And we always have a high opinion of ourselves. So don't choose a method that goes directly against your given personality. Don't choose a method that relies on a high batting average. You're not a good stock picker, right? Don't choose a method that relies on a high win-loss ratio if you're not a patient trader. Don't choose a method that won't fit into your schedule if you don't have the time for that method to work. Think about it. These are logical, common sense comments. So by understanding what you're good at, hey, I'm a good stock picker, but I'm not patient. I am patient, but I'm not a good stock picker. Well, figure out what fits best in that balance, okay? Choose something that just maximizes your strengths and minimizes your weakness. That is the key. It doesn't matter what it is. Maximize what you're good at, minimize what you're not, and then grow from there. Do that for a while and then make small, meaningful adjustments that will get you to the next step, the next level. You're not going to find the holy grail overnight. You're going to go through some different management methods and some, some wiggles and roller coasters and ups and downs along the way and some frustrations. I thought I was going to be great at that, and I wasn't. I thought I was going to be awesome at five-minute pivots, and it turns out I stink. Okay, let's figure out a different management strategy. And that's what your first year is all about, and that's why I tell you guys to risk five bucks, ten bucks, because you're learning these things. And that's okay. You're a human being. That's what we do. Right? That's what we do. Okay? All right. I just brought this up because we went over this chart last week. And the point simply I'm making is, what if you did five minute bar by bar? What if you did pivots? See the difference here? Now, obviously in this case, if you were doing a pivot management, you would probably have what I call a climactic rule or a parabolic rule in your management. What I mean by that is you simply get there. You know what? If a trade ever goes parabolic, even though I'm doing pivot management, I have the right to get out of it, right? At some big target. If it has the criteria of a parabolic or climactic setup. I'll repeat that because I think it's helpful. Doing pivots means being patient. But if a trade, if you're fortunate enough for a trade to go parabolic on you, you're probably going to want to get out because it's going to turn around. So what you would do then is put a rule in your trading plan that says, I'm going to do five minute pivots unless a stock goes parabolic. And this is the rules for parabolic. Parabolic means 
two or more super wide range bars, extreme volume, bottoming, you know the rules, okay? And then you would get out down here at the bottom because the bottom has been set on this thing. But if you did a five minute bar by bar, this is an unbelievable move, right? And you're getting in at 20 bucks and you're getting out somewhere around 18.25. It's a dollar 75 on a 25 cent stop. It's a pretty good move, seven to one, okay? My point is, is you're going to get different results on different charts. The charts I showed for a five minute bar by bar are really unusual. This, you know, how often do you take a trade that turns into a parabolic in your favor? Not that often, like one out of 500 trades, right? Honestly, you're literally in it and it turns parabolic. It's pretty uncommon, okay? Um, so I'm, I'm commenting on this one because I wanted to tell you guys about the parabolic move idea if you're doing pivots. Have rules in your trading plan for these things, okay? But you're gonna notice different managements produce vastly different results. And I'm gonna reiterate what I said. Just because one might be more profitable doesn't mean that's the one you should choose. I'd rather have you make 10% less money but be comfortable when you trade than be on the edge of your seat with sweaty palms and jittery just to make 10% more money. You'll grow into that 10% more money at some point. You're not there yet. You're not ready yet. Okay? So I hope you guys learned a little bit about trade management. We honestly could have gone for two more hours on this topic and 25 more slides. All right. But I thought it was interesting to take the exact same chart and look at it in four different angles with four different approaches. All right. Like I said, it'd probably be a little bit shorter today and it was. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the lecture. I hope you learned a little bit about trade management and more importantly, learned a little bit about yourselves so that you'll apply the proper trade management with reasonable expectation, given your time constraints and your personality. All right. I'm Jared Wesley. We'll get back at it again next week.